Okay, so the first question on this test, it says number 27, but it's number one for this quiz. And it says, if y equals 17x minus nine, then x equals four, what is the value of y? So pause the video, try to figure this out, and then we'll go over it. So to get this question right, the best way to do it is to take that four, substitute it into the equation in place of the x, and I've shown you on the screen the solution for how you can do that. Hopefully you got B59 as the right answer. If not, you can pause the video and take your time understanding this explanation, then we'll go on. Okay, the next question says, for which value of x is the expression y equals 7x over 2 minus x undefined? Pause the video, try to figure this out, and then we'll go over it. So you might get a question that also says, for which value of x is a function undefined? It's the same process here, but the idea is that you can't have a zero in your denominator. The denominator just means the bottom of a fraction, and you can never have zero down there. All right, so to get this right, we take the denominator, which again, that's two minus x. We're gonna set it equal to zero, and we're gonna solve for x. So what we can do here is we say it's two minus x, and we wanna get the x by itself. So let's do the opposite operation of subtraction which is addition, so we'll add x, and whatever you do to one side, you also have to do to the other. If you do that, you'll see that two equals x, and it's really that simple. Let me circle the right answer, it's d. Now, a lot of people have trouble with these questions, so I'm putting the solution up on the screen here with the expectation that if you struggle with this, you'll pause the video, take your time understanding this, and then when you're ready, we'll move on to the next question. Okay, approximately where on the number line is the fraction negative seven over three found? And please try this without a calculator. Pause the video, try it now, and then as always, we'll go over it. Okay, so this is an example of an improper fraction. So the first step is we wanna take this and convert it into a mixed number. So to do this, we know that our mixed number is gonna have the same denominator as the improper fraction. So we can put the three down here. Oh, and let me bring the negative sign out before we forget. So I wanna think, Three times what number, okay, is gonna get me a number that's close to seven, but it can't be a number greater than seven. So I'm gonna use two here. And the reason is because if I do three, and I use three right here, three times three is nine. That's a number that is higher than seven, but three times two is six. So that's why I'm sticking with the two here. All right, so now I know that three times two gives me six, and I want to be able to add a number to get seven. Six plus one obviously is gonna give me seven. All right, so basically what I've done is I've figured out now that the mixed number is negative two and one third. So I wanna find that down here on my number line. So on our number lines here, it's always a good idea to look at zero as a reference point, right? And so right off the bat, since we know that this is gonna be a negative number, uh, answer choice A, we should be able to rule that out because the arrow is pointing to something between one and two. Uh, really B2, we should be able to rule that out because the answer is pointing to something that's between zero and one, meaning it's gonna be a positive number. That leaves us with C, D, and E. But we have to think that since it's gonna be negative two, third, two and one third, Okay, if you remember the fraction one third, you should memorize or at least know that one third is equal to 0.333 you're repeating, right? A bunch of threes that keep repeating. And so knowing that, we would say that E is gonna be out because E is pointing to a number between negative three and negative four. D is out because that's a number between zero and negative one. Now right here we see that this in C, that it's pointing to a number between negative two and negative three. Makes sense that that would be about negative 0.333. So hopefully you got C as the right answer. If you have trouble with this, I'm putting the solution on the screen. You can take your time reading this and then keep going when you're ready. Okay, so the next question is answer without a calculator, 56 plus 79. Pause the video, try this out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so the best way to do a question like this is to just line it up vertically and you think about it like, what is six plus nine? Six plus nine is 15. So I put the five here, carry the one up here. What is one plus five? That's six. What's six plus seven? That's 13. I bring it down, that's 135. E was hopefully what you picked. And if you had trouble with this, I'm showing the written solution and you can pause, take your time. And then when you're ready, we'll go on. Okay, here's the next question. I'd like you to try this one without a calculator as well, and then we'll go over it. All right, so let's go over how to do this question. So the first thing I want you to see here is that we can simplify this down. So we can take a zero out of each number here in the first fraction. And here, let's see, we've got three over 30. If 
we divide the top number by 3, that gives us 1. If we divide the bottom number by 3, that's going to give us 10. And so let me rewrite this question after the simplification was done. Okay, so we would have half divided by 1 over 10. Now, how do we do division with fractions? Well, really all you have to do is take the second fraction and you're going to flip it upside down and you're going to multiply. So 10 over 1 is just the same as 10, so we don't need to write the 1. Then you multiply fractions by going right across. So it's 1 times 10. 1 times 10 is 10. And remember, I said we didn't need to write the 1 down here, but you can think of it as 2 times 1, which is just 2. And 10 over 2 is the same as 10 divided by 2, which is 5. And I don't see that as an answer choice here. And it turns out that E, none of the above, is the correct answer here. Okay, the next question says, what are the coordinates of the point marked by the red dot on the graph below? Pause the video, try to figure this one out, and we won't do multiple choice answers. I'd like you to try to come up with the answer on your own here. Then as always, we'll go over it. Okay, so when it comes to graph reading, the first thing you have to know is that there is an x-axis, which goes horizontal, and horizontal, or you can kind of think of that as back and forth, and there's a vertical axis, or an axis that goes up and down, and we call that axis the y axis. The dot, okay, is going to have both an x and a y coordinate. So that's why we say that there's a coordinate pair. And so the first value that you write in a coordinate pair is always going to be an x value. And the second value is always going to be a y value. So to start off, we want to find this dot and we want to figure out where, what is the x coordinate of this dot? So what I recommend you do is look at the dot and just with your eyes, just trace straight up here till we hit the x axis and we see that it hits the x axis at negative two. All right, we can do the same with the y axis. So we look at the dot, we say, hey, this is our y axis going up and down. We follow with our eyes from the dot all the way over till it coincides with the y axis. We see that that's at negative four. The answer here is simply negative two and negative four. And if you didn't understand that, here's the solution. Okay, here's the next question. So I'd like you to try to do this without a calculator. Pause the video, try this out, then we'll go over it. And this is an important one to know how to do. Okay, so to get this question right, you have to understand PEMDAS or the order of operations rules. And so basically what this tells us is that we want to start by with the P. We want to start with the P, which means parentheses, all right? So before we do anything else, we want to start by solving what's inside of the parentheses. So what's 16 minus 5? 16 minus 5 is 11. So let me rewrite the question now. So I'd rewrite it as 11 squared minus 30 times 4 plus 16. So now, what would we do next? We have to go to the next step of PEMDAS, which is our E. The E stands for either exponents or square roots. And we don't have any square roots, but we do have an exponent. So what is 11 squared? Well, 11 squared is just 11 times 11. And 11 times 11 is 121. So I can rewrite that as 121. So rewriting this gives me 121 minus 30 times 4 plus 16. So we've got parentheses and exponents and square roots done. Next is our M, which stands for multiplication. So we've now got... Uh, minus 30 times 4. So we're going to leave the minus sign in front of whatever answer we get here, but let me just pull out 30 times 4. So how do you do this without a calculator? Well, you first do 4 times 0, which is just 0. Next, you do 4 times 3, which is 12. Turns out that this is 120. Now remember, when I rewrite this, I want to leave that minus sign in place. So I would have 121 minus 120, and this is all going to be added to 16. All right, so 121 minus 120 is 1, which leaves me with 1 plus 16. And 1 plus 16, hopefully you know, is 17. And E is the correct answer here. Now, this is very important that you understand how to use order of operations rules. So if you struggled with this, you can go ahead and pause the video and check out the solution here. And whenever you're ready, you can move on to the next video in the series. When it's ready, I'll put a link right here. You can click and watch it.